since this is all part of the link local network, which is a social media kind of thing, I'm going to talk about an example that where Microsoft used social media techniques to solve a significant customer support, customer satisfaction issue. And the one in this case, um, using this effectively, they were going to have customers solve each other's problems, which is more and more happening. Less interaction with the company, fewer calls to the contact center, um, and better resolution to the issues that come up. So let's spend just a minute going through this. This is from, um, is everyone familiar with Microsoft Office Live? OK, some people are. There. It's basically an environment that has added features and functions for people who use Microsoft Office. Doesn't cost anything. Um, and, but the issue was it, Microsoft made this investment, and it actually helps people use their products more, locks in their customers better, but nobody was using it. So why was nobody using it? The first reason was that, um, or the first challenge was that for a product that didn't cost anything, how do you get people engaged? It's, it's sort of interesting that you know, when it's free, although you came tonight and it was free, so thank you very much. <laughs> um, and then if it's free, you don't have any revenue associated with it, so how can you afford to spend a lot of money on support? And the last issue they had on the, your right is the fact that when that what I was talking about a minute ago was when customers went to find the answer to an issue for Microsoft Office Live, there were half a dozen websites, totally separate, unconnected. You could go to the Microsoft website. You could go to you know, sort of a public website. They all looked different. They weren't connected. You couldn't get good answers. So what did Microsoft do? They, uh, I talked about many disparate and different websites. They all look different. Um, so they created a single integrated website, and they built a community around that using social media techniques where there was a single website you could go to. And notice the three things at the top. Find it, ask it, and answer it. So if you had a question, you clicked on find it one place. Now that meant you could get an answer from uh, a Microsoft support person, you could get an answer from, in the knowledge base from another user, it, but it was invisible to you where it was coming from. The fact it was easy to find. Um, ask it if you couldn't find it, you could ask a question, basically posting it to the community, including the Microsoft people, um, to answer that question. Or, as a community member, you could be on there and answer the question. So, one place, three clicks, very simple, everything looks the same, and it had tremendous effects, very, very successful, actually. So um, the other thing, before I get to the results, the, some of the site features that helped were, there were lots of comment, you could rate responses, you could rate people who contributed, so people wanted to do a good job. You could also distribute, if you notice in the lower right, you could distribute answers to your colleagues, you could distribute answers to other people you worked with, to people in your company, um, very easily using email, Dig, MySpace, Google, Facebook, whatever. So what happened? Look at the uh, number of page views that went up. Um, and this is just a four-month period in the beginning of 2009. Number of page views went up tremendously. The answer rates went up significantly. And the last one, they don't provide. There's no dollars attached because it's internal. But basically, look at the difference in the cost for supporting um, Microsoft uh, Office Live users, telephone versus email versus using the community. Much happier customers, much lower cost for Microsoft. Very effective approach. All right, so what were the five? I should have not put them up, but make it a quiz. But OK. But you were taking notes, I know. So anyway, what were the five steps to customer satisfaction? First is you have to be constantly soliciting feedback. How are you being viewed? How are you doing? You, don't, you won't know how to respond unless you know how you're doing. You have to create a corporate culture that says that the customer is important. Um, that, that is really critical. Um, 
you have to have multiple regular points of contact with your customer. That is, don't just sell it and then support the user, or don't only call on the decision maker because they're the decision maker and then ignore the users. You have to have multiple regular points of contact that you make sure that those are effective. Engage them in your product development process and your support process like Microsoft did and make your company easy to deal with and easy to find. So, quick summary and then we'll have questions. It's about the right time. Um, the most valuable asset that any company has is satisfied customers and that's we saw some of the statistics, but that's really true. When I looked at Catalyst going in, it was clear that the single biggest asset, and this was true for um, D&B as well, the single biggest asset either of those companies had was a blue chip customer base. Boy, you just couldn't get a better customer base than that. And losing them would have been actually the death of either company. Both companies survived and, and eventually did very well. Um, take every opportunity to positively touch your customers and now, after the break, Steve's going to tell you how to get new ones. All right, are there any questions? Sure. But what is going on in the corporate world? Because you're in a CEO position. What are they thinking? Well, it, it's a really good question. What they're thinking mostly is cost savings. And that is short, as we've seen, a, a 2% increase in retention is a 10 equivalent to a 10% reduction in cost. So, Companies really need to focus on that, and the Microsoft example is a good one. They actually were able to reduce their costs and increase customer satisfaction at the same time. What you need to do is to be conscious of both. I mean, if you can find a way to do it, I mean, there's nothing wrong with having your call center in the Philippines. If you have a problem in the middle of the night, they're awake. I mean, it's all. But, um, you, but you have to make sure that I mean, there re it really isn't a problem if the call center is not in the U.S., putting aside the political economic issue, but that's not the issue. The issue is making sure that when you do that, the people answer the phone a certain period of time, that the people on the other end know the answers, that they have access to a knowledge base that helps them solve your problem quickly. If you have that stuff in place, you can reduce costs and increase customer satisfaction, but you can't have a focus purely on reduction in costs, and that's why they do it. Desperate times call for desperate measures, and a good example of that is Catalyst, actually, where we supplied software to, as I said, companies with huge distribution issues, or, um, Home Depot, General Motors, and so forth, running giant warehouses. And if those warehouses actually go down for, it's like a million dollars an hour it costs them when it's not working. Well, the software is part of it, but there's you know, automated guided vehicles, there's all kinds of other stuff involved, conveyors and sorters and all this kind of thing. We had to be able to fix anything because they thought it was our fault whether it was or it wasn't. And saying, oh yeah, call the conveyor company, call the... So we created value actually by saying we were the one-stop shop to keep your warehouse up and running, even if it's not our stuff. We'll make sure, we'll just, you call us, we'll figure it out, we'll call the conveyor guys or, you know, whatever it is, we'll get you back up quickly. That made, that was a way of providing service that um, took that issue away and, and actually was at, viewed, they knew what was going on, so they, value, they really put a lot of value on the fact that we were the one place they could call that would fix whatever the hell it was, at least most of the time. 